How do you? Today on Flipping Science, we're looking at metal activity and displacement reaction. The science understandings we're going to cover, uh, metals differ in their tendency to lose electrons, more reactive metals lose their electrons more easily, uh, more reactive metals donate their electrons to ions of less active metals in displacement reactions, and we're going to write the equations for those. Differences in metal activity can be represented by a metal activity series, and then determine whether a reaction will occur given a metal activity series. So metals differ in their activity. A very reactive metal will lose its electrons very easily. A Metal loses electrons by definition, so a metal that loses electrons very easily is very reactive. Um, the ions of a metal um, that are easily reduced, uh, that happens when a metal is not very reactive. So a less reactive a metal, um, its ions are very easily reduced by gaining electrons. And we end up with these things, these activity series here. So here's a couple of different examples of activity series. This one looks at reactions. Um, this one looks at just oxidation reactions as well. So we've got the oxidation reactions over here. What this means is that metals up here are fairly active, so they give off their electrons easily. So potassium, for example, is very reactive. Metals down the bottom, let's have a look at silver, for example. So silver ions, but they reduce relatively easily, and that means it's very easy to find silver, well, somewhat easy to find silver as native silver in the environment, whereas you never find potassium lumps in the dirt. The potassium is very reactive, so it reacts with things, whereas uh, the silver, for example, it doesn't react, so it's very easy to find. So let's talk about displacement reactions. So if you put a more active metal in a solution of a less active metal's ions, you get a displacement reaction occurring. The more active metal that you put in oxidizes, and that oxidizes to ions of that metal, and the less active metal's ions are reduced to that solid metal. So let's have a look at an example. So down here I have, this is a strip of zinc that we had to clean, and we're putting it in a copper solution. And this is sped up. So as soon as the copper solution, so this is copper sulfate, as soon as it's added we can see that the zinc turns dark. And that darkness over time you'll see it changes to a red colour. Also as the reaction is going on, have a look at the colour of the blue of the solution and see if that changes. So let's have a look at what's happening here. So zinc is a uh, more active metal than copper, so they've got the copper ions in the solution, so the zinc is being oxidised. So again, zinc is being oxidised to zinc ions, so zinc makes a 2 plus ion, and we're getting two electrons. So oxidation is lost, it's losing the electrons. The copper ions in the copper sulfate solution here are being reduced. So we we'll take the copper ions in that pretty blue CuSO4, SO4 is 2 minus, so it's the Cu2 plus ion. That's a really pretty blue one. So the copper 2 ion, that's gaining two electrons, and we're producing solid copper. And that's what this brown colour that you're seeing is. That darkness of the metal and now the brown that's coming out, that's from the copper. So copper metal is brown. So as time is going on, we can see that the copper colour, the blue copper of the solution, is getting lighter and lighter. And we'll compare it at the end of the video to what it was at the start. So that's overall, we've got two electrons on either side of the arrow, so we don't have to do any balancing there. So we've got zinc uh, plus copper ions is going to zinc ions uh, plus copper. And we can put our states in. So we're getting solid copper from the copper ions that are being reduced. And we can see the brown color really nicely now. The zinc ions are going into solution, so that's aqueous. Copper ions from the copper sulfate, they were dissolved in water, so that's aqueous. And our zinc was solid metal when we put it in there. So now if we have a look at the video, I'll pause the video there at the end. Let's rewind it to the start. And we can see that if we have a look at the blue colour, fairly dark, lighter, lighter, lighter. And the reason why it's getting lighter as time is going on is those copper ions from the solution that give the solution the blue colour are being reduced to solid copper. So the solution changes colour. So another example is uh, copper being put in silver nitrate solution. And we can see it down here. So we put some copper wire, which is the brown. And we put that into a colourless solution of silver nitrate. So there's a liquid in here. And we can see as the reaction progresses, we get these crystals of silver forming on the copper wire. So let's have a look at what the reaction is. Uh, we'll also see a colour change over time um, of the solution. So keep an eye out for that. 
So we need to have something being oxidized to generate electrons. Um, in this case, it's the copper wire here. The solid copper is being oxidized to copper ions. So we'll go copper goes to copper, we'll call it two plus ions, uh, plus two electrons. So the copper metal here is being oxidized and that's producing electrons. Those electrons are able to reduce the silver ions in the solution. So the silver ions, Ag plus, plus an electron, is being reduced to solid silver. Now, if we have a look, we've got two electrons at the top and only uh, one down the bottom. So we need to multiply the bottom one by two. So we get copper plus two silver ions, uh, one plus, uh, plus two electrons goes to copper two plus, plus two electrons, uh, plus two silvers. The electrons will cancel out. So we're left with the overall equation of copper plus two silver ions goes to copper ions, Cu2 plus ions, plus two solid silver. And we're going to put our uh, states in, so solid for that one, aqueous for the ions, they're dissolved in solution, and solid there. So now if you have a look over here, you can start to see a bit of blue forming in the colorless solution. That blue, that's the blue copper 2 plus ions that are going into the solution. So as the copper is oxidized, the silver ions are reduced. So the copper ions are going into solution, that gives it that faint blue color. So here we have a more active metal, in this case copper, being placed in a solution of a less active metal's ions, in this case silver, and we're getting displacement. So you can predict whether a metal will displace the ions of a less active metal by looking at an activity series. So over here we have an activity series that we could look at. So, the more active metal oxidizes to its iron, the less active metal's ions are reduced to the solid metal. So let's have a look. What would occur when an iron nail is submerged in a zinc nitrate solution? So let's have a look. We'll look through our activity series. We have iron here and we have zinc here. So in this case, we're putting an iron nail which is less active into a solution of a more active metal. So in this case, what's going to happen? Nothing. So the zinc placed in an iron solution, we would see a reaction, but the solid iron being placed in a zinc solution, we have a less active metal being placed in a solution of a more active metal's ions. Um, these ions are already oxidized, they're already really stable, so they're not going to go back spontaneously unless we put in energy, for example. So in this case, nothing would happen. So in this question, uh, we've got solid chromium going into solution of sodium ions. So let's find where they are. So here's chromium and here's sodium. So I think again we have a solid metal that is less active than the ions of the metal in the solution that it's going into. So again, what's going to happen here? Nothing. And again to explain, sodium oxidizes really easily. So it's oxidizing to its um, ions very, very easily. And that means it's very hard to push it back the other way. So the chromium oxidizing here, it's not going to be able to force by producing electrons. It's not going to be able to force the um, sodium ions to reduce back to the solid sodium. You need to put in an awful lot of energy to get that to happen. So in this case, the reaction won't happen again either. Let's look at this example. So now we've got nickel and lead. So let's find nickel. So here's nickel and here's lead. So now our solid nickel um, is... Uh, more active than the solution that's being put. So the lead ions are aqueous down here. So in this case, the reaction will happen. So let's figure out what's happening. So the nickel is more active, so it's going to be oxidized. So the solid nickel is going to be oxidized. So nickel is going to go to nickel ions. So we're going nickel 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. The lead ions in the solution are going to be reduced. So the Pb2+, plus, the lead 2 plus ions, plus 2 electrons, goes to solid lead. So here we have oxidation, oxidation is loss. Here we have reduction, reduction is gain. So lead ions are gaining electrons to form solid lead. So our overall equation is nice and easy here because the electrons will cancel out. So we've got nickel, solid, plus lead ions, Pb2+, plus, ions in solution, aqueous, goes to nickel ions, aqueous, and we would see solid lead forming around the piece of nickel. So lead, solid. 
Right, our last example is reacting magnesium with silver ions. So down here we have a video playing, and thanks to Resource for doing this. So there's a mixture of solid magnesium powder and a silver salt, and some water has been sprayed on this. So you can see the water drops coming in. And then we get a big explosion happening. So what's happening there? Well, let's find out our metals here. So we've got magnesium up here, and we've got silver down here. So there's a big gap in reactivity, and when that happens, that means you get usually fairly big reactions happening, because there's a big difference in energy between uh, the oxidation and the reduction reactions. So that partially explains the big explosion here. The other reason for the explosion is magnesium, when it catches on fire, gives off a nice big bright white flame. So the energy being produced is enough to catch the magnesium powder on fire, so we get a nice big explosion. So we have a more active metal, in this case magnesium, in a solution, when we flew the water on, of a less active metal's iron, so that's silver down here. So we will get a reaction, as we just saw in the video. So the magnesium is being oxidized, so magnesium goes to magnesium ions, uh, 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. So the magnesium is really reactive, so it gives off its electrons really readily. The silver ions from the salt in the mix down here, uh, they are going to be reduced. Silver yeah, ions readily reduce. It's really low on the reactivity series. So the silver ions again, plus an electron, are going to solid silver. So now we can do our reaction equation. And again, we're going to have to multiply the bottom one here by 2 to balance out the number of electrons. And I'm just going to assume that's happened. So the magnesium ion, uh, magnesium is reacting with two silver ions, and that produces magnesium ions and two silvers. So solid silver would be being produced here, but that would explode with the magnesium that's left over. Magnesium ions in that little bit of water there, uh, silver ions and solid magnesium over here. So today on Flipping Science we looked at uh, metal activity and how that applies to displacement reactions. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.